Of course, all this, all this month, our, we're talking about deliverance. Um, tonight is going to focus on a little bit more on healing, but it, you'll see it has a lot to do actually with deliverance. Um, March, our topic is developing a revival culture. Okay, how do you develop a ri- revival culture in the local church? How do you, you know, because a lot of people are waiting for revival to come. And you can move in a revival lifestyle. And so that's our topic in March. The first Monday night in March, Tom Ledbetter will be here from Eastgate Community Church in Rockwell, Texas. He's going to do basically a class on dream interpretation. So if you're not already doing it between now and then, start recording your dreams. Okay? Record those and... um, Will if you have them, I'll have you. If you'll give them to me in like an email form or something, and I will send, I will forward them to Tom. Okay, and that way, because Tom often finds that you have a group of people that God will start kind of speaking some of the similar things in dreams. So, and how many know God communicated a lot in dreams in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament? Okay, um, the last session, I think it's the last session we'll do in March. Um, We'll have also another guest speaker, um, Chuck Marr from San Antonio. And uh, Chuck is a a grad of Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. Um, I I like him a lot. I heard him minister of all places, um, Ringling Community Fellowship a few years ago. And uh, came over and Chad invited me and I went over and that's where I met him and his wife. And really loved his ministry and we just stayed in touch and uh, um, so he's he's one of the revival leaders for Bethel's Leader Net, Leaders Network and so you will really really appreciate um, Chuck and he'll minister here on Sunday morning and then be with us Monday night in the Supernatural School so awesome alright okay just a reminder in addition if you are pursuing certification you have a monthly ministry report to do And that's not a big deal if you're helping in healing rooms or any type of practical ministry. Just give me a report on that, okay? Um, You can email it to me. You can write it up, hand it in, and just tell me. And it can be anything, anything, any type of ministry, you know? It can be something practical. Maybe you prayed for somebody at Walmart. Um, Maybe you prayed in the healing rooms. Um, Maybe something like that, anything ministry-related. And it doesn't have to be long but just give me a few details, okay? All right, because we want you applying what you learn here, right? One of the biggest problems with the church is we get a lot of information and we become pew warmers. And we sit on it. (laughs) And we want you guys doing the stuff, okay? One thing that John Wimber said was everybody gets to play, right? Everybody gets to be involved in kingdom works. All right. All right, so Morgan, give me the thumbs up when you're ready. Okay. So I welcome everybody tonight, and our topic tonight is New Age versus Christian healing. Okay? And we are recording, so just be mindful of that. If you have a cell phone, go ahead and make sure that you've silenced it. So, um, you know, we're in a moment when there's, there is a real increase in much of the church that uh, there's, an, there's an increase in the understanding and that signs, wonders, miracles, healing, those are for today. Amen. We're hearing incredible reports of what God's doing all over the planet. You know, Brazil and, and pl- revival in places like Brazil and Mozambique and hot spots of revival like Reading and some of those places. And so God's just really moving. But also, how many of you realize that there's, as signs, wonders, and healing is increasing, uh, there's also an increase in counterfeit deceptions, okay? And First um, John 4, 1 tells us that we are to test the spirits to see whether they are from God, okay? And um, we're all to do that. And there's a, there are a lot of counterfeits out there. And so tonight we're going to talk about New Age Healing, how to recognize it, how to understand why it's not from God, and um, and to deal with some of those things, how to recognize. And also, how many of you, uh, have, have some of you heard, um, I know there are 
segments of the church that believe any miracle, any sign, any, any wonder is a counterfeit. They believe it's from the devil. And so we're even going to address that tonight, okay? Um, two, uh, two New Age healing practices that we're really going to touch on uh, are going to be Reiki and therapeutic touch. Who's heard of Reiki or therapeutic touch? Right. Uh, it's, they're becoming very, very common practices, but they have their origins in occulta, occultic practices. Okay. Um, now, we're going to examine why these are counterfeits and how to determine when a practice is not Christian. Okay. And um, I've got a quote from Dr. Randy Clark here. And it says, in, It is in the context of healing that New Age is attempting to win the allegiance of the hearts and minds of people, especially Christians, by presenting New Age energy healing therapies with a thin veneer of Christianity. As a result of this, many people are engaging in New Age practices unaware of the spiritual dangers involved. Okay? And I know at one point, even a few years ago here in Ardmore, we had a Reiki therapy center. And, and listen, as I talk about this, I, I'm not coming against anybody who's practicing or saying that they're bad people, okay? They're deceived, okay? And part of the problem, why people are gravitating to some of those things is because the church hasn't stepped into the supernatural. And, um, it, it, and I'll touch on this a little bit, but it, it became such a problem recently that... Uh, a lot of priests and nuns in the Catholic Church were actually getting really involved in Reiki therapy and, and not only receiving Reiki healing therapy, but also learning to be Reiki practitioners. And as the Catholic Church started investigating it, um, they released us an official position that if you were involved in Reiki in any way, that you needed an exorcism. So... Hallelujah, right? And, you know, a, a lot of, um, you know, there are some Christians, and as I've studied some of this, that even have, have done doc, ma master's doctoral theses on why Reiki is Christian, okay? Even in this church a few years ago, we had a guy who was attending here, and we got to discussing it one day, and he said, well, he said, Reiki is the same energy source as Christian healing. And I said... No, it's not. And, and, uh, and we briefly talked, and I didn't change his position, and he didn't change mine. And, but that really bothered me, you know, that there's that level of deception and that's working. And, um, so, but we're going to talk about that tonight because we want people to get set free, okay? We want them to experience the truth. And the devil's really good at counterfeiting what's real. Right, he likes to do that. So, um, and you know, that's that's our second point here. Satan's strategy has always been to counterfeit what God does in order to draw worship to himself and away from Jesus. Now, what was Satan's role in heaven? He was an archangel that was probably responsible for worship. Right. Um, you wonder if he even just got jealous of Jesus and the worship that was being directed towards Jesus. We know that he, uh, the word talks about that he led a rebellion against God, was kicked out of heaven, um, took probably a third of the angels with him. Some people theorize that he was one of three major archangels. And so um, the, those angels followed him. Um, but he's really good at deception. Right. He, he comes as an angel of light, and he will often duplicate what the Father is doing and what Jesus is doing. So, Now, Paul wrote about this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, and it's talking about the lawless one that's coming. Okay? And it says, The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Okay? So, you know, we know that now a lot of times people will read this and it talks about, you know, this, this person that's coming 
um, this lawless one. And, uh, you know, again, we're not really focusing on that other than the fact that he uses um, counterfeit displays of power and signs and wonders to draw people away from God. Now, some people read this and say, oh, anybody who uses signs, wonders, and miracles, that's not God. But in the context of Scripture, that's absolutely ridiculous. When Jesus and the early church and the Gospels, the book of Acts, they're filled with accounts of the miraculous you know, was that, does that mean that Jesus and the early church were counter, doing counterfeit miracles? Of course not, okay? Um, another, another example of this we see in Scripture, and how many of you know that the devil can do some counterfeit miracles? Right? Uh, you know, we see this in Exodus 7, 12, when, when Moses went to Pharaoh and basically saying, let my people go. And, um, you know, and it, it's really funny because... He's, God's releasing these judgments through Moses, and, and the magicians, the sorcerers, they're duplicating what God's doing even when it's causing trouble to their own people in their own nation. That's not very smart, right? And so, um, but one, one thing that they did was, you know, uh, Moses threw down his, sna- his staff, it became a snake, and so... The Egyptians did that. They threw down their staves, and they also became snakes. But what happens? Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. That serpent swallowed up the other serpents. And I think that's a really good illustration of even though the devil will try to duplicate some things, the the Lord ultimately is more powerful. And, And every imitation, every duplication, every counterfeit will be swallowed up in comparison to the power of God, okay? So I think that's a very clear picture of, of what the enemy tries to do, okay? And I, I wrote this here in, on C. Satan can imitate God's power to an extent, but it will always be inferior to what God does, and the same is true of New Age healing, okay? Now, as we begin to talk about, just kind of give a little bit of background, and I won't go in super in-depth into these things, but as we talk about New Age healing, um, basically in some states, because, because therapeutic touch and Reiki practitioners have been doing research and documenting healings, they have been able in some states that insurance will actually pay for Reiki and therapeutic touch practices. And um, other things, you know, some, some nurses, some massage therapists, they actually do continuing education in some of these courses, okay? But a lot of it's come about, and they've, they've legitimized it because they've done a lot of research. And so Dr. Randy Clark, who's head of Global Awakening, he's endeavoring to record and document medical miracles that are happening to counteract this. And the program that I'm teaching this for, the CHCP program, which is the Christian Healing Certification Program, um, part of it is to train people and certify people who then can train others to do Christian healing, whether it's people in schools like this training or chaplains in hospitals or uh, people in healing rooms, okay? And to document what the Lord is doing to give some credibility to, to Christian healing, okay? And, and we can't say that's stupid and unnecessary because the enemy's doing it, and if we don't do the same thing, and how many of you know um, God's not afraid to let people scrutinize to see if healings are, have actually, has actually happened? We should never be scared of that, okay? All right. So let's look at some histories of some New Age healing models. We'll touch a little bit on therapeutic touch. And the co-founders of Therapeutic Touch are Dolores Krieger and Dora Coons. And Coons is the past president of the Theosophical Society. Okay, now that's different from Theophostics. If you've heard of Theophostics, that's a good thing. But the Theosophical Society is actually an anti-Christian organization. Okay, and Dr. Randy Clark wrote, Dora Coons was m- mentored by Charles Ledbetter an influential author on the occult who rose through the ranks of the Theosophical 
society and was instrumental in its spread to Australia. Okay. Now, the you know, and again, so these two healing models, they're going to look somewhat similar to Christian healing. Okay. But it says the practice of therapeutic touch involves a practitioner placing hands near a patient in, in order to promote self-healing by, by detecting and manipulating a person's energy fields. Okay? I don't want anybody manipulating my energy field. Right? <laughs> yeah, stay away. Don't do that. And, um, you, know, and you know, I've talked about how some parts of the medical community are accepting that. However, here's another quote from Dr. Randy Clark. Therapeutic touch research in general has been so problematic as to be labeled fraudulent by the National Council Against Health Fraud. Okay? So some of the some of the research isn't really holding up. Okay? So a little bit about therapeutic touch there. Let's talk about Reiki. Now it's interesting because even, you know, uh, I lived for almost five years in the nation of Japan. Um, I actually heard about Reiki while I was in Japan. And I I met a lady who talked about how her husband was very gifted in Reiki. I had no idea what it was at that point. I even had to ask, you know, the, the missionaries and the apostolic leaders that I was working with, what the heck is Reiki? And, um, and I didn't know a lot much more about it until I, we began to study it in some of these courses. But Reiki focuses on channeling energy into a client's body, okay? And... Um, Many versions exist, but the Japanese version is primarily practiced in the United States. And um, we'll see in a minute, this, this actually has been marketed by saying things like, um, pray for people for healing the way Jesus prayed, okay? Which is a, a deliberate deception, okay? Here's another quote from Dr. Randy Clark. Reiki is pronounced Reiki and is a Japanese word that refers to the universal life energy of a higher power. Rei in Japanese is loosely translated as God or a higher power. Ki is similar in thought to Chi or Ki in Chinese medicine and is translated from Japanese to mean life force energy. There are other similarities in relation to Hindu prana and Christian light. Reiki master William Rand attempts to align Reiki with Christianity by promoting the teaching that universal life energy also means God as defined in Christianity. And in fact, it is God in the form of the Holy Spirit. This is incorrect. Okay. So again, I mentioned that Reiki is it's being marketed as practicing healing prayer as Jesus did. Now, the reason why, one of the reasons that they did this was there, there was a deliberate deception um, to overcome some prejudice that American citizens had. And Reiki began to be introduced first in Hawaii after World War II. So if you've got a Japanese healing model being introduced in Hawaii after World War II, do you think that's going to be a problem? Right? If you've talked to, uh, you know, anyone who... Um, was a soldier in World War II or had and, you know, was living at that time, um, there was a lot of animosity towards the Japanese, okay? And uh, a, lot of, a lot of racism, a lot of prejudice, a lot of hatred because of the attack on, World War Har World, on Pearl Harbor in World War II. So obviously, most people aren't going to accept, especially when it's being introduced in Hawaii, this, this healing practice, Okay. And uh, so to overcome that, they begin to deliberately market it as a Christian style of healing, okay? Now, there are a lot of false claims um, that revolve around the form of Reiki that's practiced in the United States. And many of those center around a young Japanese Buddhist named Mikao Usai. And he is credited with discovering and developing Reiki. Now, there's one claim that he became a Christian and obtained a Doctor of Theology degree from the University of Chicago. That is not true. Okay? There's another false claim that he, that he became disappointed with liberal Protestant Christianity and its doctrine of cessationism. Now, cessationism is basically 
um, the belief that the gifts of the Spirit, signs, wonders, miracles, healing, all of that has ceased because we now have the Bible and now we have Scripture. And so um, it's a practice that uh, many, many evangelical churches in America accept and practice and preach, okay? And so, um, so you know, there's this, this false claim that he became um, disappointed because of cessationism and he returned to his Buddhist roots where he received guidance and a heavenly visitation that he received this prayer model. And um, if you study Reiki, there are like um, even certain hand signals and ways that you move your hands when you're practicing, you know, when you're channeling this energy. And the hand signals actually mean something. Now, when I'm talking about hand signals, not some of what y'all are probably thinking, but, <laughs> but like some of them that... <laughs> For example, you know, some of the, the symbols in Japanese, the, the hiragana, the katakana, the kanji, um, there's one that literally means the Buddha in me salutes the Buddha in you, okay? So there's, this isn't random, okay? And, and even if you're going to become a, Re a Reiki practitioner, you, um, you receive, you, the, the, devil, the devil really likes to counterfeit. I've already said that. And we believe in impartation. We believe in the laying on of hands. You know, if someone's laying hands on people for an you know, impartation, I'm, I'm in, you know. And I, you know, we talk about that. I'm, we have people do impartation here. They're, that's scriptural, the laying on of hands. But the devil also will counterfeit that. And so if you're wanting to become a Reiki master, you receive an impartation. Now, unfortunately, it's demonic right? And you can get a demonic impartation, right? So again, be careful who, um, who's giving you an impartation, <laughs> right? So be careful about that. Now, um, records from the Reiki organization do point out that Usai never converted to Christianity and he never received a theology degree. He was a Buddhist who later became a Buddhist monk and was buried at a Buddhist temple. So there's nothing even though there are false claims circulating to make people more willing to accept this, when you, when you research this out, this isn't true, okay? And again, I, you know, we as the church, and I say it as the royal we, the corporate we, you know, we've really failed in this area. And because so much of the church, especially the evangelical church, and especially liberal Christianity, um, has turned away from the power of God. And many people are, are, are seeking to move in the supernatural. They're just going for the wrong source. Okay. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about why is, why is Christian healing and New Age healing, why are they at odds? Okay. Um, so first of all, Christianity is about the Trinity. Okay. And Jesus is the Christ. Okay, he's not one Christ. He's not one of many Christ, and you find that often in New Age teaching. There is one Christ, and it is Jesus. Um, Jesus said in John fourteen six, "I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me." Another scripture, familiar scripture in Acts four twelve, "Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind." by which we must be saved, okay? So, and again, there's some, there's some error in doctrine there, okay? And we're not getting into a lot of the specifics of New Age teaching. It's, it's varied. There are many parts of it, but um, Christian healing revolves around Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, okay? Another thing, the second point here, is the ministry of Christian physical healing is a partnership with Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit, Okay? How many of you know, and we talk about this, we're working with God, or rather God's working with us to produce healing, okay? Now, God can supernaturally touch people without us, okay? But however, God generally prefers to work through His people, right? We're hosting His presence. We're carrying His glory. He's wanting to work through us. However, we're working with Him, Okay, we, you know, Jesus did what he saw the Father doing, 
Okay? He moved in that manner led by the Holy Spirit. And if Jesus did that, then we're to move in that same way. Mary, the mother of Jesus, gave instructions during his first miracle that is excellent advice for every believer. And in John 2, 5, records her admonition to, to those at the wedding, right, when Jesus turned the water into wine, do whatever he tells you, okay? So as we move with Jesus, do what he tells you to do. Move in the Spirit. Now, obviously, we go according to scriptural guidelines and all those things, but be led by the Spirit, okay? Um, here's another quote from a, a gentleman named Alexander Venter. He wrote, We are midwives facilitating God's, uh, facilitating people's experience of God, helping to birth what the Spirit is doing. We work with God in the person, secure in the knowledge that only God can heal. Working with God and facilitating people's healing is a deep mystery, a great privilege and responsibility. Okay, Because really, in, if you move in healing ministry to any degree, you start very quickly realizing that only God can do that. Right? You pray for enough people, when you do see somebody healed, you rejoice, but there are moments you pray for people that aren't healed. And again, we're not dress, addressing the mystery of healing. I'm living in that tension right now. Okay? <laughs> You know, but we're, we're midwives. We're working with God. He's working through us. You know, in his earthly ministry, Jesus modeled ministry for us, doing whatever he saw the Father doing. Okay? Now, the, the Holy Spirit is also the third person of the Trinity and not an impersonal force that can be nip, manipulated. Don't try to manipulate the Holy Spirit. It's not going to work. Move with Him. Move with what the Lord is showing you. Move with what God is saying. Move as the Spirit's leading. We can quench Him. right? We can grieve Him. We can disobey Him. Okay. So pay attention to what He's doing, and we can't just manipulate Him. Now, some Reiki practitioners believe that the Holy Spirit is the energy that is working in the Reiki practice. And, but the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. God himself, he is not an impersonal force. Right? You know, and sometimes I think we fall into this, and I think it's just because it's habit. We, sometimes we think of the Holy Spirit as just an influence that comes on a meeting. But he's a person. He's God. He has emotions, right? And so we have to be aware that he's just not some impersonal force. Okay? We're, leading, we're led by him. We yield to him. We move with him. Okay? Now, Jesus perceived what the Father was doing. He heard or saw it and then obeyed. This is what makes Christian healing so different from Reiki and therapeutic touch. We are not learning how to channel impersonal power. That would be sorcery. Okay? We are not learning how to use impersonal power to balance someone's energy. We are not independent agents. Instead, we are in a dependent relationship with God. We are not making Him our servant. Quite the opposite. We are yielding our lives to become His servants. As we come into relationship with Jesus and the Father through the Holy Spirit, we enter into a war with the works of the devil. Okay, Now, this is a real kingdom understanding, and we've talked about this in the past. Sickness, disease, pain, demonization, and damnation are destroyed. We work with the Holy Spirit. That is the difference between a theistic religion like Christianity and pantheistic religions like Buddhism, Hinduism, and New Age. And again, this is another quote from Randy Clark. Right? We're yielding to the Lord. Okay? Uh, and, and even though He wants to use us, we're still walking in obedience and moving with Him. Okay? Here's another quote. Uh, in contrast to this, Reiki practitioners believe a higher wisdom guides the flow in ener of energy in Reiki. But this is not the Christian concept of God 
This is actually a pantheistic concept of God. Okay? Dr. Randy Clark wrote, The Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church defines pantheism as the belief that God and the universe are identical with no division between the Creator and His creation. Pantheism is polytheistic, meaning that it believes in multiple gods. Okay? Do you hear a lot of people use spiritual terms that aren't really Christian? Well, well if, if the universe meant it to be, it'll happen. You hear that? Right? Which a lot of times a lot of Christians say, you know. And it's just that belief that there's this life force, right? And that we're channeling it. And that there are many gods working, and, and, and which, which is pantheism, okay? Um, which goes in direct opposition to uh, that, that God, is, God is one, right? And we live in obedience to Him. We're just not channeling what He wants to do, okay? So you have to be careful when you start hearing that stuff. And it actually has really, really penetrated some segments of the church, Right, And it, it sounds Christian, it sounds spiritual, but we need to be very aware that it's not. Okay? And that's where uh, Reiki is a very pantheistic, uh, oh, I'm just working with the universe. Right? Well, don't do that. Right? I remember years ago, years and Jamie and I hadn't been married very long. And, um, we, she was going to a chiropractor for treatment. And we liked him. He was, seemed to be doing a good job. And after she'd seen him several times, and she was having the beginning of some physical problems that manifested themselves much later. And One day we went into his office, and he goes, well, I'm going to manipulate your chi today. And I, I said, I don't really want you touching my wife's chi. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm like... I don't, I don't, what are you talking about, Willis? I don't, I don't understand this. And I think that was the last time we went to him, you know, because it was a little strange. Um, yeah, we, we didn't want to do that. So now uh, there are, uh, another thing that differentiates New Age healing from Christian healing is that there are two kingdoms that are presently in conflict upon the earth, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. Okay. And we talked a lot about this several weeks ago when we really focused on, on praying for the sick and Christian healing because, you know, the kingdom has come, all right? The kingdom has crashed in because of what Jesus has done. Now, however, it's here, but it's coming, right? And we got into some crazy discussions and people freaked out about the millennium and all that. Remember that? And, uh, but the reality is, is that the kingdom has come, but it's now, but it's not yet. And part of our job as believers is we're working with Jesus, we're working with God the Father, we're working with Holy Spirit to see Jesus come and deal with every work of darkness and every work of the enemy, okay? That's why, you know, we don't accept sickness when it tries to come, like, no, um, this is something that God wants us to overcome, okay? We're in a tension, right? There's that divine tension of, you know, we're, we're warring against this. We're not just saying, oh, because it's happening, God wants it. God doesn't want people sick. He doesn't want them demonized. He doesn't want them oppressed, okay? So our job, that's why Wimber, you know, John Wimber, I mentioned earlier, uh, before class, at the beginning of class, that, you know, we all get to play. You know, we're all called to do kingdom works, okay? Now, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, Jesus declares, All authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. Because all authority has been given to Jesus, his followers are to go and preach proclaim and demonstrate his kingdom over every spiritual power that is in opposition to his rule and his kingship. Amen. Amen. The kingdom's coming to Ardmore. Right? I mean, it's here, 
but is there the expression that we fully believe wants to be here? Right? If there were a greater expression of the kingdom, okay, I think Ardmore would look differently. Right? He's looking for people to work through and work with and believe him and to intercede, pray, preach, teach, see a shift come to our city. Amen. Now, Luke 9, chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. Again, it's what we talked about last week in looking at when Jesus commissioned his people, there was always a commission to do miracles and to cast out demons. It says, And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And so not only did Jesus send them out, he didn't just send them out to proclaim. If we're just proclaiming the kingdom, we're doing a halfway job. And there's, that's a nice way of saying it, right? But we're, we're not only, sorry, we're not only to, to proclaim the kingdom, but we're to heal the sick as a demonstration of the kingdom. Okay? And as we do that, the kingdom of darkness gets overwhelmed. One of the best ways that we can overwhelm the kingdom of darkness is by doing kingdom works. Right? There's power in that. Dr. Randy Clark wrote, The church is returning to the kind of Christianity that Jesus died to establish. We are now witnessing a mighty move of God within the church that is bringing a revival of healing and a rediscovery of the message of the kingdom of God. Amen. The healing ministry of Jesus and the church is focused on the kingdom of God invading and expelling the demonic, right? Because when the kingdom comes, you know, it's just like when the children of Israel went into the promised land, okay? God said, hey, this, is, this land is yours. It belongs to you. Now go in and take it. Go in, possess the land. Go out and drive out everything you know, because if we're going to cross into what God has for us and what He wants, it's going to take some warfare. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take overcoming some of those things in the kingdom of darkness that oppose the kingdom of God. And so we have to begin to move in that. And, and we have to expel those, those things that are opposing the kingdom of God. Now, but it also says, New Age Healing makes no mention of of this idea of dealing with the issue of casting out or contending with demons. Of course they're not going to do that because much of New Age is wanting you to actually host demons and work with them, right? You know, many times people have familiars and all these things and avatars and depending on what place that you're in. And, uh, so, and those are demonic things that have actually come as an angel of light, okay? So here's another point as well of why New Age healing is opposed in opposition to Christian healing. The kingdom is within us, okay? But it is Jesus who heals, not us, okay? And here's where sometimes, you know, and we need to make distinctions here because sometimes we can miss it a little bit on this point, okay? A lot of people, you know, uh, the, the scripture where Jesus says, you know, the kingdom's within you. And so people are like, well, and this is true. We've got the kingdom in us. We've got to move in obedience. We've got to release what God gives us. But ultimately, it is God within us, God moving and working with us that is doing the healing, not us. Okay? And that's an important distinction to make. So here's another Randy Clark quote. I've got a lot of Randy Clark quotes tonight. Um, he says, we don't want to be like the people who practice New Age. What do they teach? They teach that the ground of all being is everywhere and in everything. Okay? That's a kind of pantheism. And we touched on pantheism, where, that God and the universe are one. And it's in you, and what you need to, re to do is release the power in you. We have to be very careful lest we begin to think the same way. I've got the kingdom in me so I can release the power through me when I want to. It may be logical, but it is not biblical. God is still the king, and he is the one that heals. Okay. Now, is he looking for people 
to release faith? Is he looking for people that will pray? Is he looking for people who um, will believe God and lay hands on the sick? Absolutely. But it is God ultimately who does that. Now, this is in opposition to what is presented by Reiki masters. According to them, Reiki healing seems to guide itself and seems to contain a higher intelligence or power. Does that give you a red flag? Since Scripture points to another spiritual reality than the Holy Spirit, a demonic power seems to be the source of energy of healing energy in Reiki and New Age healing. Okay, and I don't understand this enough to talk about it, but just to touch on it a little bit, um, there are some that believe that when God created the earth, that um, He breathed the spirit of life, right, His breath. And that there is a possibility that, that some New Age practitioners are manipulating that through demonic power. And, and that is possibly even why that there is a measure of success that they are seeing. You know, I will say I, I have a, a friend, a, a, a younger girl, who um, was having lots of problems uh, with endometriosis. And um, she went to a Reiki practitioner, and which made me very sad when I heard that because um, uh, I'm trying to say this without exposing their identity. But let's just say in her formative years, we'd had a lot of influence in her life. And we love her. We love her family very much. I'd hoped that she would stay connected to Christianity. But, you know, we've got people legitimizing Reiki. And so she went to a Reiki practitioner, and after having some Reiki treatments, her endometriosis actually got much worse. And um, so, again, we have to be careful uh, of some of those practices. Okay? The next point, Satan himself is a deceiver. Okay? 2 Corinthians eleven 14, we've already mentioned this, but Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Okay, so he's duplicating what God does. He's duplicating what the Holy Spirit does. And one of Satan's main tactics in spiritual warfare is deception. And this is evident in the counterfeit practices of New Age healing. Okay, and I, I mentioned this earlier, but there's a statement here. The Catholic Church has even taken a position that those involved in New Age healing practices... Reiki in particular have exposed themselves to demonic oppression and infestation and should consider deliverance ministry. Okay. So when the Catholic Church takes that kind of stance, we should pay attention. You know, I mean, whatever you think about the Catholic Church, there's truth. Okay. And, and you know, they've been practicing deliverance for a long time. And so they've recognized that this is a, a practice that's causing some issues. Now, here's another thing that we've already touched on a little bit, of, you know. But it's so important, especially um, when you start moving in healing ministry. Are, si are all signs and wonders false? <laughs> now, I'll, I'll just even be honest today. I, I met my cousin's funeral today. Um, my father's there. We brought him. He's not doing well. Uh, again, I'm in this moment of tension where I have a father with multiple myeloma, and we're f discovering that he's probably had it a long time, and he's not doing well. And, um, you know, I, I have a cousin who's quite a bit older than me, and he was down from Tulsa for the funeral, and I shared with him. Um, and I'm not close to him. I've seen him probably maybe three times in the last ten years. And, uh, you know, I'm like, you know, Dad's got multiple myeloma. And he goes, well, he goes, dang. He goes, well, Oral Roberts is dead, so I can't bring him down here to pray for your dad. And it was a really nasty remark. And it was really mocking. And um, I didn't like it. <laughs> now, do I think Oral Roberts was perfect? No. But I greatly respect him. The guy had a real, real healing gift, an incredible call 
and he's done some incredible things, you know, but man, as someone who's pursuing healing, that, and he doesn't know anything about me that I'm a pastor. I mean, he knows I'm a pastor, but that's about it. And I was just like, oh, this is a slap in the face, you know? Um, and so there is that belief out there that, that any type of healing practice is counterfeit, okay? And uh, however, if you study Scripture, um, a study in Scripture in relationship to signs, wonders, healing, and miracles revolves around the issue of worship, okay? And so... Jesus was worshipped when he did miracles, and he directed worship to the Father, right? The early, the early church, the, the, the church in the book of Acts, they did the same thing. You know, they're doing miracles. Silver and gold, have I none, but what I have to you, I, what I have I give to you, you know? They're, you know, in one point, people start worshiping because they think they're the gods, and they're like, no, worship God, worship Jesus. There's this... There's this direction to worship God. However, you see the same thing where there's a counterfeit, okay? And um, even, we won't turn there, but in uh, Revelation 13, verses 3 and 4, people worship and follow the beast and the dragon because of false signs and wonders they perform, okay? So they're doing false miracles, but who are they directing worship to? Satan, the beast, the dragon, you know, they're, and, and, you know, in Matthew 24, verse 24, he, Matthew wrote, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect, okay? Now, the presence of miracles depends on who and what is worship being directed to. If someone does a miracle and they say, this miracle is because of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God, they're giving worship to Jesus, right? But if they do a miracle and say, hey, this is Buddha or, you know, Beelzebul or Freddie Mercury or whoever, you know, um, <laughs> they're directing worship. They're trying to lead people away to another source. The issue is worship. Because the word is full of real miracles, but it's also full of counterfeit miracles. So we have to determine, okay? And uh, counterfeit healing miracles performed outside of Christianity and scriptural practices perform false wonders and direct worship away from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, okay? So again, what, what, what or who is being worshipped as a result of a miracle, right? Because, you know, what's happening in many places, I mean, look at the example of Heidi Baker, you know. Heidi, they'll go into a village <laughs> and just say, hey, bring us your blind people. And if they don't get healed, don't believe us. Wow. <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty gutsy. You know, but God's backing it up. And, and a lot of times you see in many places, you know, that many people are getting evangelized in other countries because of the presence of signs, wonders, and miracles, okay? Because there's a, there's a proving that's coming forth, okay, that's being demonstrated. Now, last point here, much of the church must make adjustments in order to meet these challenges of false teaching and practices, okay? First of all, Dr. Randy Clark wrote, we have created a climate of spiritual impotency, and there was, as a result, many have turned away from the church to New Age practices and beliefs. You know, some of these things we've been talking about, many in the Catholic Church, some, I've heard reports of some in the Methodist Church, pursuing this, and it's because they're filling a void and a, allowing a counterfeit to come in because the church isn't moving in this. Now, not all of the church. Some churches are, and more and more churches are recognizing, you know, 
that, hey, there's more and we have to move into this. And that's more than just a belief in something. Right? You can believe in something and never practice it. Okay? So not only is there a, there's a teaching on it, there's a believing, there's a practicing, there's an implementing of these things that really have to happen. Okay? Another thing is, while the enemy will bring in many counterfeits in the realm of healings and other practices and gospels as well, some of which will be appear to be legitimate with real power, the church's focus and worship must be on Jesus. Right? What did Paul say? Even if an angel comes to you preaching a false gospel, you know, let it be a curse. Don't listen. And has that happened in history? I mean, didn't a, an angel of light bring revelation to Muhammad? Right? What about Joseph Smith and Mormonism? You know, uh, angels coming and bringing extra revelation, right? So, <coughs> excuse me, the responsibility, <coughs> excuse me, you guys, of believers today is to preach and demonstrate the kingdom and overcome every work of the enemy. Okay? So, we can't just say, oh, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. We have to, as the church, begin to teach, train, and equip people to do these things. Okay? That's the whole purpose of this school. Okay? That's the whole purpose of what we're doing is we're, we're teaching people how to practically move in these things and do these things. Amen? Amen. All right? So let's stop there for a moment.